May I have your name? My name is Daniel Oropesa. Okay, and uh, introduce me about yourself. Well, I started doing sculpture about 17 years ago. Before I got into metal, I was into painting, woodwork, and welding on cars. The minute I discovered welding, I wanted to create icons, things that I knew of from the past. And so my first sculpture was Charles Atlas. And then from there I went on to uh, learning about the craft of metal and welding and mixing metals together. Mixing copper with steel, stainless steel with bronze, bronze and steel. And then eventually I was starting to have dreams about doing something even bigger and more creative. So I decided to work with glass. And uh, from the people that I spoke with that I thought knew how to do metal and glass, I was told that that was impossible, nobody's ever done it. And uh, I thought, okay, so there's the challenge. I knew what I had seen in a dream, and it was beautiful. And from that point, I was determined to make it. So I went to uh, a glass school to learn how to melt glass and metal. And the teacher in front of uh, about 100 and 105 students told me that I couldn't do it, that it was impossible. But I had already experimented and I had already done it. So I went to my car and I came back to that class and I showed him. I set it on his desk in front of all the students. And he told me right in front of the students how that couldn't be. How what I had done is nowhere in the books. And I said, books? Books are like a map. They don't know every single place. And because I did something that was outside of the book, um, two of the students asked if they could work with me. And I said, sure. So I didn't take the class. And they introduced me to another artist who was working with glass. And he gave me a good idea. Try copper. So I started working with copper and glass. And after many, many experiments uh, of working with glass and steel, copper seemed to be the ticket. And then from there, I started to understand that I could shape, cut metal with a plasma cutter, weld it together with bronze. Again, something that wasn't very popular in the art business. And then I started to understand what it is I liked and what my preferences were. And I think that as a sculptor or an artist, that knowing what your preferences are is what makes you unique. So I simply made what I damn well felt like making. So what you're looking at is metal that's actually melted with glass inside it. All of this is just melted in. This is uh, called Lux Maximus. This is uh, 9 feet tall, 12 feet long, and this is copper, bronze, and steel. All the bronze has been put on one drop at a time here, as you can see. And the whole thing is welded together. The lights change color, as I can change the lights you know, on the face, any color that I want, and also on the body. How do you control that? Uh, the machine comes to be there? Mm -hmm. And you created it? Yeah, I created everything here. So, how, how did you come up with this idea? I had uh, a dream, and nobody's ever done it. So I, I didn't know that you couldn't do it, so I did it myself. Mm -hmm. So I just experimented and, and over and over. And then I moved on to making something like this. What is that? This is a dragon. It's called Fear and Curiosity. He's wearing the robe of knowledge. In his hand, he has a new idea. He has to embrace this idea, or else he wouldn't be as fierce as he wants. In the other hand, is an idea that he has to let go. 
So this is an old idea. Each one of these drops represents his knowledge. But when we, this is a metaphor for who we are. This is an idea that we have to embrace and add to our knowledge. If we don't, just an idea. Well, it could be anything you want. But we have to embrace it. But there's a moment when we embrace something that challenges our belief. And that moment may scare us, but we have to take it in. We are scared to, you know, let it go, you know? We're and afraid to let one go, and this one is the just... The other hand is empty for a reason? Nope, not for a reason. It's just that he doesn't know what he's going to do with it. Capture it, ruin it, take it in, love it. Oh, so he's... He doesn't uh, know. He's just... He's awaiting a... Yeah, he's, 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 he's filling... Yeah, it's the in-between. That's like life, right? Just like life. That's what it's designed for. The whole body is made of one drop of steel at a time. This is all one drop at a time. It took one year and three months. And these bronze dots were put on top of the steel. As you can see, these are all, and you can see the body, and I'll turn the body for you. So, um, and this is again, glass and steel melted together. Is there a reason <coughs> particularly you uh, used the glass? For tongue and uh, yes, it's, it's called art. I chose that because I thought it would be the best. This one can change colors too. No, no, it does not. Mm -hmm. What is the material of this? Is it that's glass? That's glass. Oh. Yeah, that's glass. So, so you can melt glass. So did you do all the work here? Nope. No, I, I go to another place where they do the glass with me. Oh, okay. These are very kind of delicate work. So very. Are you really kind of like a detail-oriented person? No, not really. Not at all. I like, I'm pretty much a big idea person. Yeah, like all kind of ideas. Well... If I have an idea, I just begin. Yeah. And I do it the best I can. So how did you become an artist? Uh, I was um, a painter before this. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, be a stay-at-home dad and take care of my daughter. So what I did here was I just uh, decided to start playing with paint. And Are you so, single dad? Yes, I am. Are you all okay? Mm-hmm. How many kids you have? Right? <coughs> I have one. Yeah. One kid. Oh. So this is the phoenix. This is... It's um, a big bird. Big bird. I'll yeah. turn it for you so you can see the back. I can tell that you're... Okay. Your arts are kind of imaginary, you know, uh, pictures. Yes, they are. So... Yeah. You imagine a lot? All of them are metaphors. So this is a uh, very archetypal of. Would you? Yeah, please that. To it. Yeah. Thank you. Tell me about the size of your studio again. <clears throat> the studio is 2,000 square feet. Uh huh. We do uh, hair photography. And then. Sculpture. Can I show your uh, hair salon spot here? Yeah. Very small little spot. It's a small little spot, but we do hair here. Uh huh. Is that your painting over there? No, it's not. Okay. So this phoenix is about to kind of fly away. Well, the story of the phoenix is that when we are, uh, when our life falls apart, uh -huh. we need hope. Right. And when we rebuild ourselves, we come from the ashes. And the phoenix is a symbol of hope and resurrection. Right, like a victory, right? Um, some, something like that. Mostly it's about building yourself up from nothing again. Once mm -hmm. you fail, then you must build again. And this is uh, the, the, uh, the idea of that. He survives in the fire, right? Yeah, he, he comes from the ashes. So when our lives fall apart completely, we must rebuild ourselves from nothing. And this, this from the fire <laughs> comes this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you explain to me more about this art, how you built it? And yeah, what you're seeing here, it. what you're seeing here is the red. That red is not red glass. 
That's the heat of the metal turning red hot and the glass captures it. So the clear part is the glass? The clear and, and the metal, the red, that's the actual metal turning red hot. Well, that's how the glass is melted onto it. Uh -huh. So you cut the metal first and then you pour the glass over. glass over it. Oh, okay. Did you ever get burned while you were Of doing course. That? No? Hmm. Yeah, of course. Of course, so, of course, yes. So you used to uh, paint and then you moved to sculptures? <coughs> yeah, I moved to sculptures. Well, Did I, you ever study about this? No, I never have, ever. Oh, this is from your yeah. know, imagination, huh? Yep. Yeah, pretty much taught myself uh, everything uh, about this. This one, very um, detail oriented, and uh, kind of there's lots of uh, part that are really sharp looking. Very. <laughs> yeah. Very. How long did it take for you to finish this? Six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. wow. So where do you get the inspiration from? Well, where does anybody get the inspiration from? Yeah. Your mind. It just comes to you. You ask, you think, mm -hmm. you relate to things, and then uh, <clears throat> this is how they come out. So kind of like a whole picture, you know, comes to you one time, or just kind of like a, it's you work on it? I may think of something, and then I start building it, and it, uh, it gives me ideas along the way. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but basically I have a good idea of what I want to make. Uh -huh. This part looks like a, some tree, you know, trunk or something. Yeah, that's all done yeah, one drop at a time. Very rough looking. Right. Uh, and uh, is there a facial expression there on the face? And, uh, yeah, it's just determined. It looks a little, little sad to me. I don't know why. Maybe because of the shade on the face? Maybe. Under the eye? Maybe. There, there. I'm putting more light on. Because these are not the real, you know, creatures, right? Right, they're mythological. So, so did you ever use some uh, information, how they look like? Or no, no, I just made them up myself. Wow. So. What was the time in your situation when you come up with this art piece? Were you, were you going through a difficult time? You needed a hope or what? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a... Um, the Phoenix was an important time of my life. So was the dragon. And so was the art. Mm -hmm. The art uh, was a very meditative process for me. And I was able to uh, spend a lot of time by myself discovering new ways to work and uh, rebuilding myself as I built this art. Mm -hmm. And this is what I came up with. So uh, working on your art actually help you being encouraged and being inspired? Yes, because I made progress and there's nothing better than making progress. Okay, what's the other one then? This is the, uh, this is a very creative fish. This is more fun, you know. You can see it from the side better here. Oh, I can tell ice popping uh -huh. up. Like yeah, a this, is just, this is just for fun. This is something that I made just to be uh, animated and fun. Oh, okay. Do you have a name for it? No, I don't. You come around the Usually side arts, they have a names. <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a name for this one. No? So, what's down there? Like, that's, that's, that's a part, part of the, the fish. Really? I don't know what kind of fish is that one. That's also imaginary I, as well. I'm completely imaginary. That's rock and resin and sand on the bottom. Sand. Oh, yeah. And the blue part is the water? That's blue sand. Yeah, that's all water. Uh -huh. mm. What did you use the painting? That that's colored sand. Yeah. Uh, if it can rotate itself, 
like a little that would be that would be nice and yeah then it moves around because uh, it has different shapes everywhere yeah well they all do but. so you say something you know you have to see around yeah you have to see all the way around it to yeah. appreciate it so i can see I can see the glass part too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a kind of little too, huh? So how long did it take for you to finish that one? This one was seven weeks to eight weeks. I had to make it in a hurry. Wow, that's a quick job, huh? Mm -hmm. Is that better? Oh yeah, thank you. The light makes it look pretty on this glass part over there. Mm -hmm. So, um, metal and glass, they mix well together? No, they don't at all. Oh, uh, but it was uh, great for you to try this, right? <clears throat> but I had to try it. Yeah. And, because, uh, both of them are very delicate to deal with. Yes, you know? very. Yeah. And the uh, ladies like something colorful, you no? Know? <laughs> well, I guess so. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't make it for ladies. It just... These parts on the back yes. looks a little bit like a seaweed, no? <laughs> Maybe so, yeah, that's fine, if that's, what, if that's what they look like to you. Kind of like a flying away by the waves uh -huh. in the water. So what is the story about this fish? Just for fun, it was just imagination, that's all. Okay. So tell me about this one. Well, the, all that, the tail is made of glass. Mm -hmm. And there's a light at the base of the tail, all the way moving, all the way down to the base here. And um, I can control the lights from another place. And then, so there's 19 pieces of glass that make up the tail and the main. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this whole body is made of glass and metal melted together. You can see the glass inside it. You can see the glass here. Mm -hmm. You can see the glass all through here. Mm -hmm. So, this is copper and bronze and glass melted together. And uh, this one, how long have you been making? This took a year. A year? A full yeah, year to make. This is a big project for you. Right? Huge. Yeah. It looks very strong. Good. <laughs> you know, if I don't see the head part from the back side, yeah. it looks like a, some kind of ox. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I can see that. Who has eyes? Blue eyes. Oh, right now he does. So you said earlier that you're doing this for your child. So what was that about again? I didn't really pay attention to you. How does it help? Well, I wanted to be a stay-at-home dad. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want her to come home alone. So while she was home, I decided to start doing something that was creative. Oh. And I started painting, or started working with wood, or something like that. <clears throat> and then I started welding, and then once I started welding, I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. This type of art must be very expensive to, you know, buy all the materials to work with. It can be, yeah. All the tools cost, uh, and, and right. so it is expensive. So have you been making some money so far? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So how do you uh, find uh, customers? Uh, I take my work to art shows. Uh, I show my work in galleries. Uh -huh. I um, work a lot online. I send a lot of photographs out. But mostly you have to come and see it. Right. Are you famous? No, not yet. Huh? Well, since this is the, you know, you're the only one. Right? That does this kind of work, yeah. So maybe you want to let people know about that? Well, I am the only one that does this. I'm not sure why. But yes, I would like to let them know. Yeah, maybe you want to teach people how to... No, I don't. That, no? no, that takes too much time. So this is all stainless steel. It's all cut with the plasma cutter. It's a special laser, a handheld laser. Uh -huh. And then I hammer it out to make it, give it, to give it the fullness and give it the shape that it needs. Yeah. Like I said earlier, it looks like a thinker. Is it your, is that you? When you nope. are in difficult time or? Nope, nope, no? nope. Just something I wanted to do. You said this one is Moses. So tell me about this. Well, I'll keep sitting there and I'll move the light so you can see it better. Oh, I can see eye. So I didn't see it earlier. I didn't see eye earlier, but now I can see it. Looks like a blue, huh? A little bit. Yeah. What was it? It looked like that, like he was a tough looking guy like that. <laughs> but I can see your art very, how can I say? Emotional? Yeah, and kind of rough and... <laughs> yeah. So it's all hand cut. All of this is hand cut and then hammered from the other side. How long do you take? Well, it takes, it just takes a couple of weeks to make for me. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Is it heavy? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> okay, it looks nice. So what is art for you? What is art? Mm -hmm. The expression of my ideas, the attempts to make material out of the ethereal. So if I have an idea, mm -hmm. the art is can I make it happen in the real world, in the material world. So art is a struggle. Mm -hmm. So. So what, what is I love the, I love the struggle. You love struggle. I love the struggle. Yeah, because there's when, progress. When do, you, when do you feel struggle when you work with your art? Trying to make what I have in my mind, uh -huh. what I see with my eyes. Until you get what you Until want. Until I get what I want. So when you get it, how do you feel? Fantastic. Like I've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. So you feel satisfied, you know, when very, you yes. see the finished ones? Yeah. Every time I make progress, I feel very mm -hmm. satisfied. But is that, isn't it difficult for you to let them go when no. they're sold? No, not at all. No? No. The art was in the making of it, not the keeping of it. Mm -hmm. but well, your case, like I said, your arts are very commercialized. They're very expensive ones. They look expensive. And they're probably the people who have a lot of money might yeah. want to help them. They, they are. Many artists out there, they are very, you know, living in the poverty, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what do you think of it? You know? Well, I try not to think too much about that. You know, Because they mean, enjoy their arts too, but then, you know, um, it doesn't help their life, so it's kind of... Well... You know, not everybody has the luxury of buying art. Yeah. Yeah. When you have the kind of money that it takes to buy things that really move you, that's pretty wonderful. But I have to make it. It's not a matter of... Mm -hmm. I have to make what I think about, what I, what I feel and what I see. And it has to move me. If it doesn't move me, then I won't do it. Mm -hmm. So, some kind of pleasure. Um, you have. Yeah, there's pleasure in the struggle. Right. Yeah, there's if absolutely. If there's only struggle, well, you wouldn't well, continue. Well, life is already difficult. Right. But if you make progress, right, then makes life worthwhile. Yeah, what I was saying is that if you find only struggle from it, 
you know, because it's another way of work, right? So if you don't, you know, have any profit out of it, like not only income or also some kind of achievement. Of course, from of course, it. right. I'm going to say, I mean, you might can have achievement because you can see the finished, you know, art, but let's say, um, because you still need to spend money on buying materials and, you know what I'm saying? Right, I do know what you're saying. Yeah, but then so. when you cannot have a, some kind of reward, you know, if it's a struggle, so when you, uh, you think it can continue? I will continue, you know, I may not, uh, I may not sell it. Uh, people may not like my work, mm -hmm. but I must continue to do what I find interesting. Why? Because it, there's nothing it's else to do. You know, there's it, nothing else to do. Not for me. Is it kind of like a, your? It's fulfilling um, for me. Uh, kind of like a, your way out, some kind of, you know. This is what I do, and what I've done for about 17 years. And I'll continue to do it because I love it. Oh, I remember what I was saying. Earlier. What were you thinking? About the struggle. Because um, many people, um, I think most people have an artistic part of them, right? Mm -hmm. But many of us just discourage to keep them. Of course, because yeah. it doesn't make, people are told it doesn't make money, so why yeah. do it? Yeah, and then they, you have to spend the money. Um, uh, well, so art isn't just for sale. No, 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 no. Not only for sale part, like uh, getting all the pieces, you know, materials to... Well, yeah, but that's different. Them. That's not, that's not what you asked that's me. Expensive. The struggle, the struggle in art is to make progress towards what you see in your mind. And that changes you as a person. Well, my, uh, in my opinion, like, let's say, like you said earlier, I totally agree with you that, you know, life is struggle already. Mm -hmm. Right? It could be you're having a difficult time to, you know, Anything. make money to take care of your own needs. Right, days, right. You know, but also um, there's some hobbies, we can say. Uh, it could be art like yours or music, whatever people are interested. Sure. It could be their getaway. Sure. Comfort uh, zone. Of course. But if they find the struggle from there also, like, uh, it can be guilt. So, oh, you're not making money, but you're, you know, spending money for enjoying it. So that kind of thing. Even if you don't have uh, any pleasure, that just uh, let's say encourage you. Well, but you still gonna, you think you still gonna do it, you know? Yeah, as long as I get pleasure from it. Look, a lot of children. The, the pleasure can come to, uh, the, can come with the struggle. That's what I said earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I believe. The struggle is part of the pleasure because there's progress every day. Even in failure, there's progress. You know, many people out there, uh, they <coughs> gave up, right? Their pleasure, their fun part of their life because this whole society, the world, you know, discouraged them to keep on this artistic part of mm -hmm. us, creativity. I am one of them, you know. I used to draw a lot, and then but I was uh, discouraged to, you know, stop doing it because one of the reasons was expensive, you know. So, and I felt guilt too. Of course, right? I, I get that. Yeah. Um, well, I don't feel guilty for it. You know, it's my life; it only makes sense to me. So I don't have to answer to anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, good that you, you have some kind of reward. Some of course, of course, yeah. yeah. This is where people can keep going on stuff. Right, but yeah. you know, with my sale, with sales in my art, I can keep going. Right, that's good. Yeah. So in the future, what kind of, you know, topics you, you want to work on in your mind? Well, I don't know. Not yet. I don't know what I'm going to be doing just yet. I'll probably do some. Some. Uh, I'll probably do some images of people. I'll oh, actually do. Nice. Yeah. Well, do you actually, people? Yeah, some people and uh, some sculptures of people, which I think I'll like doing. Uh huh. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yeah. 
from this angle, this pose looks so funny to me for some reason. <laughs> and then you said this is the um, look of struggle, right? Fear, yeah, the, f he's in the moment between fear and curiosity. Okay, this sounds very deep. It is. So, what does this supposed to be? I mean, if you can tell me detail. A belief is a thought you think is true. And if you, if you don't continue examining your beliefs. So, I guess uh, you're very determined. Oh yeah, I'm determined is for for sure. But I was determined a long time ago, and now um, I try and press my talents up against very difficult dreams, very difficult ideas, just to make something bigger. Isn't the greatest challenge? You can make something big and ugly. The idea is to capture, my idea is to capture beauty, but that comes in many, many forms. If I represent pain perfectly, you might call it beautiful, but it's still painful. If I represent joy beautifully, then it's simply joy represented beautifully. If I represent anything and you feel moved by it or you feel something that is in addition to what's not here, this is just a horse. But if you feel something from that horse, if you see yourself emotionally with that horse, then I've accomplished something. So I don't need you to like it. What I want you to do is feel something. So you're talking about insight. It's not just our look. It's not just the look. It's how do you feel about it. If it captures your attention and you feel something, that's good enough for me. So if you don't like it, you're going to feel something too. Mm -hmm. So this is a personal touch. Absolutely. Yeah. Personal your prefer touch. Everybody has their preference. Some people don't like my art. Right. Some people do. Yeah, people can see things differently, right? Well, of course, of course, of course, of course. Or else, like earlier, the what was the what was the uh, a bird? Yeah, the the so phoenix. The, face, the eyes. I thought they looked as sad. Uh huh. Right, just like that's how I was uh, taking it. By the way, you mentioned about the pains in your arts. That means you should experience pains. Of so course. You talk about it. So tell me about some pains that this um, experience you had. Well, some of the painful experiences that I've had in my life was um, not being prepared to be a father, understanding what my culture was telling me to be without giving me a choice, and then finding that I had a choice all along. That very often um, the family that we grow up in can create limits that we don't want to challenge. And if we do challenge those limits, then we try and move forward to be the best we can be. And sometimes we lose the ones that love us because they think we're going in the wrong direction. When we're going in our direction, no one knows what's best for me. But there's some good ideas that I have that there are things that I have to handle in this world that are important. You have to have money. You have to have a place to live. There's some practical things. Okay, put that aside. Yes, of course. Well, I think you had asked me, you know, where uh, my art comes from or whether it came from pain or how I did that. And uh, I think when people look inside themselves introspectively when they want to find out, I wanted to find out who I was. Because when my daughter was born, I... Uh, I didn't want to be a father. I did not want to be a father. And uh, I pretty much had a nervous breakdown at that point. <clears throat> but I realized that, uh, that it was a very, very important job. And that being a father meant that I had to be 
an honest man, honest in his emotions, honest in his thinking, so that I could be real to my daughter. Uh, the way I grew up is um, I grew up with women and a bunch of boys on the neighborhood. There weren't any men that talked to me. So I um, didn't have any men in my life. I only had boys or women. And uh, I didn't realize this till later in my life that uh, I wasn't given any uh, instructions on how to be or what to be. My mom had her ideas of who she wanted me to be, but that wasn't going to be my story. But uh, when my daughter was born, I realized I had a big responsibility. And I wanted her to feel seen and feel heard. <clears throat> so I had to learn all those skills. And uh, over the last 30 years, there was a lot that I had to learn. But my art helped me go inside and see who I was and develop preferences. And I learned that we are our preferences. That's all we are. I'm not my name. I'm not my body. I'm my preferences. They make me different than anybody else. So when I'm doing art, I'm not trying to be anybody else. I'm really trying to be myself and be true to that and not be afraid of what that is or how it turns out. If I do art that doesn't come out good, I know it. And if I do art that's good, then it's presented here. So that's where I am at in my life. I simply do with responsibilities. I pretty much do my preferences in art in my life and um, my relationships. But being introspective is the only way to live. And uh, being honest about who I am and how I see things is what makes me clear to those around me so that I can become predictable. It doesn't interfere with my spontaneousness, but predictability is what uh, I'm looking for. So who I am, my art, the different things that I do, that's just what I like doing and being. So you think that your arts are presenting you? Of course. When you see my art, you know it's me. Um, what, how because nobody else does this. How do you see it? Like, is it kind of... Unique? Bright side of you or a little... Oh, it's got all different sides. The fish is a happy side. The phoenix is the rising of my, uh, my character and my soul. The dragon is, is uh, about building and destruction. The horse is about grace, power, moving forward. <clears throat> all of it represents living. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have uh, all of that, which means you are very active. You have uh, so much energy in you. That's what you want to say? Yes, absolutely. The energy of who I am is represented in my art. You are not afraid of telling people about your fear? or your My fear, my feelings, my thinking. Yeah. No, I'm not afraid of telling people what my preferences are. How are they going to know who I am if I don't have preferences? Everything I do, it's my preference. It's what I prefer. That's what I like. I don't want to do what other people like. I want to do what I like. I'll never know what other people do and like. I'll be chasing that forever. I'm not making potato chips. I'm not making, you know, cups and saucers. I'm making my art. And I take my chances with those that like my art. And the people that buy my art are the 0.11%. So, you know, I'm not making art for my friends. I'm not making art for people that, that can't appreciate it. People that like buy my art usually love it. Yeah, I think it's very important that we communicate each other and everybody wants to express themselves, right? Through their conversations and through their art or work. Yes, yes. So, um, uh, what, what is the message you want to bring to people through your arts? Have the courage to speak for yourself without 
hand-me-down sentences that come from your family, hand-me-down values that come from things you really don't know anything about, but you believe. When you really believe something, it's probably because you lived it, not because you just believe it. And to tell people to challenge their beliefs. Don't become so secure. I think many of us are scared of challenges. Of course, that's why I made the dragon. The dragon is about challenges, fear and curiosity. If we don't make progress in our thinking, we'll never make progress in our being. I think that the dragon tells a lot of things. It just, earlier I told you about, it re represents our life, right? It the dragon does, the dragon does. I always struggle in between maybe taking a challenge, opportunities, or... Or staying secure. Yeah. Yeah. Stand back. Right. Because of the fear. Right. So it's like a way between these two ways. Right. And so when it comes to changing, it's very difficult to, to tell people who know you for many years that you're different, that you do not like the things they like. Maybe some things. But to say that gently and lovingly, and don't apologize for being who you are. Because oh, so you're not afraid of failing. Of course not. I fail all the time. That's what people are afraid I of. I fail every day. To try something new or do something they, you know, believe what is right or what they want to do. Well, people aren't very afraid of failing. It's just that they don't want to fail in front of other people. Well, that's another thing, too. Yeah, it's not that their people are afraid. So, you know, that nowadays, this generation, all about the, this technology, right? iPhone or the smartphone. People, they pretend them to be somebody else and they want to show fake them, not real them. You know what I'm saying? Of course. They don't want to show yeah. their emptiness inside or their their broken heart or their whatever lacking. In right. Their life. What do you think of it? <clears throat> you know, we could get religious about that or we could go into uh, a lot of philosophy about that. But there is no virtue in being perfect. How do we relate to somebody who's perfect? Most human, we face fear, right? Many yes. Many times in life, right? Many times, every day. We struggle like the dragon, okay? But, well, somewhere around, whether you give in or you, you know, press down, right? Yes. So we overcome. Uh, even though we fail many times. Of course. That of course. We need to keep going that way. <clears throat> of course. But it's all about because we don't have any other choices, okay? Of course. You can either you can either fall and stumble and yeah. struggle and just melt right away. The whole idea is that um, behind my art is that we are all imperfect, and so is my art. But I want to be able to see myself through my art. I want it to inspire me. I want it to inspire other people. And so I want them to see whatever they see. Like when you saw the dragon, you didn't like it at first. You know, you, you thought it was scary or ugly or something like that. And that's fine, but eventually you saw more because you learned more. So um, I just want people to be able to see my art, see who I am, and see what I've done with my beliefs and how they've taken me this far. So, I mean, I really appreciate you coming down and asking me questions and, and filming my stuff here. So thank you very much.